Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. Late night is still off, and the comedy news still a little light coming out of July 4th. Hopefully, we can have a controversy. Dave Chappelle could do something, or maybe Will Smith could slap someone like that time he slapped Chris Rock. Chris Rock will not be hosting the Emmys. That's the Emmys, not the Oscars. Don't want to confuse you there. I got confused myself the first time I read the story. Chris Rock was offered to host the 2022 Emmy Awards, but turned down the job. A source says he's in the middle of his tour and is preparing for the taping of his comedy special, which will be taping this fall. That's going to be a monster special. Is it not? Yes, it is. The source adds that Chris Rock is kind of over Hollywood, and he's hoping to travel and lay low after this comedy tour. Hopefully, he'll host the Academy Awards awards next year now somebody who doesn't want to host the academy awards wanda sykes she was on with kelly and ryan and they were like hey you want to host it again and she said oh hell no and then backed that down saying i shouldn't say it like that you know what it was an amazing honor and i think it's something that you want to do you do it once i don't know if i want to do it again it's a huge job and it took a lot of people to clean me up tim heidegger was on the last laugh podcast Hey, recently you tweeted a comment in reference to Mulaney bringing up Dave Chappelle as a surprise guest on his tour. You were basically the only comedian I saw speak out against that. Heidecker said, I mean, listen, I have friends who are trans, and that sounds like the worst way to start that conversation, right? But I really do. And I have fans who are trans, and I've spoken to them about this, and I've heard directly from them. And there is tremendous anxiety and uncomfortableness and sadness and hurt that it's treated so flippantly and often dangerously by these people with giant audiences. And I don't believe that John Mulaney has any kind of issues with the trans community personally, but at the same time, I don't understand why you need Chappelle to come out onto the stage with an audience that have already paid to see you. So I did it as an honest statement that you should feel safe coming to my shows, that I'm not going to spring a leader in the anti-trans movement. It seems to be an issue Chappelle cares deeply about. I did it out of honesty and a little bit of snarky like F off and also as this message to other artists and comedians and musicians to be like, you know, feel free to speak out about this. You'll find a lot of encouragement and gratitude from a very cool audience. I'm speaking completely self-servingly here, but if you want to build a cool, young, creative, smart audience, these are not the people you should be excluding from your audience. And that's not why I'm doing it. But there are positive side effects of just being inclusive and understanding of marginalized communities that you don't even have to have full understanding of. You just have to be tolerant, respectful. And I'll say one more thing. When I hear the anti-trans comedy, it just sounds like the cheap 80s gay stuff, like Andrew Dice Clay, who I know is doing a character, where the people that Andrew Dice Clay was probably making fun of kind of got swept into the dark side of things. Bon Appetit, your home for comedy and food news, spoke to Amy Schumer. Hey, Amy, if you could have any three guests, dead or alive, fictional or real, at your ideal dinner party, who would they be? And why would you invite them? Amy's answer, Mark Twain. Yes, this choice is problematic, but if I'm being real, I want to hear what he has to say. Rachel Feinstein, my best friend and a comedian, would laugh together at Twain's humor. And my husband, Chef Chris Fisher, to share in the moment. Okay, would the dinner be at your home, at a restaurant, somewhere else? Amy, Chris would cook, but not at our home. We would host somewhere fun and different, maybe the Campbell Bar in Grand Central Station in New York City. What would you talk about? I'd ask Mark Twain what Helen Keller was like. They were friends. I'd wait until appetizers to let him know the things he got wrong. Then we laugh and I listen. He was kind of the greatest comic to live so far until I arrived on the scene. Just kidding. Got a Will Ferrell story here from Collider. I'm less interested in the story than how they phrased Will's resume. So the story, Amazon has acquired the rights to Will Ferrell and Reese Witherspoon's untitled wedding comedy. There are no other details regarding the project, including cast or pilot or a title, but it stars Will Ferrell. Or maybe it doesn't star Will Ferrell. Who knows? But here's how they phrased his resume, and I don't know what I want out of it. This just doesn't sound right. Ferrell, best known for his acting roles in classics such as Elf and Anchorman, got his breakthrough in the 1990s on SNL. After leaving the cast in 2002, he moved on to star in several films, you know, just, you know, a bunch of films that he was kind of in, sort of, as well as becoming co-founder of the comedy website Funny or Die. All right. Ferrell co-produced the HBO sports comedy series Eastbound and Down, as well as the Chris Gethard Show. We're pretty far down Will Ferrell's resume. I'm going to call up his IMDb. He's been nominated and won several awards for his work, including a Golden Globe nomination for his production work on the satire film Vice. Will Ferrell's resume were getting all the way to a Golden Globe nomination for production work? Yeah? IMDb Will Ferrell. Let's see here. Maybe I'm wrong. Will maybe just has a lot of minor roles. Let's see. He's Frank in Old School. I love Old School. Buddy the Elf. We mentioned that one. Big Earl. Uncredited role in Starsky and Hutch. The Anchorman movies. Bewitched, which nobody likes. Talladega Nights. That's worth a mention, isn't it? 
Blades of Glory, that was all right. Semi-Pro, also all right. Land of the Lost, oh, maybe maybe Collider did get his resume right. The Office, that's right. He played D'Angelo Vickers, you forgot. And he's in the Eurovision Song Contest, and he's in the Austin Powers movies. So, all right, all right, I apologize, Collider. I think you might have nailed his resume after all. I thought Will Ferrell was in more great things. Apparently not. You know who's in a lot of great things? Adam Sandler. And he's going to be in another one. Netflix has launched production on You Are So Not Invited to My Bat Mitzvah, a new young adult comedy from Happy Madison, in which a girl's bat mitzvah plans comedically unravel and threaten to ruin one of the most important events of her life. Sarah Sherman from SNL, also part of the Picks Ensemble cast. It's not confirmed, but is expected that Adam Sandler will play the dad. Let's stop off at Gossip Corner. Pete Davidson was on Kevin Hart's Peacock TV show called Hearts to Hearts. A, that name is lame. B, that name is hack. And C, I forgot that show existed. Pete Davidson wants to be a dad. He said, my favorite thing ever, which I've yet to achieve, is I want to have a kid. That's like my dream. Yeah, and it's like super corny. Kevin Hart jumped in and said, it's not super corny. It's the best GD thing you can do in life. Davidson went on to say that he's now preparing to be a father one day soon. It would be so fun to dress up a little dude. I'm so excited for like that chapter. So like that's kind of what I'm just preparing for now. Use protection, Kim. If you enjoy what I do here, buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news. I just reached out my right hand for my prop and apparently I left it upstairs, which is where I write the show. And then I come down to the basement and record the show. I don't have an iced coffee on me. Shake a shake a shake a. That's what it would sound like. Buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news. Rosie O'Donnell will host a comedy night tomorrow night benefiting Friendly House in Los Angeles. The benefit will feature performances from Atsuku Okasaka, Beth Lapides, Gina Yashir, and headliner Kathy Griffin. That's a pretty good lineup. Rosie said over 70 years ago, Friendly House was created by one woman with a dream, a dream of a safe space that would unconditionally love and support women in recovery from addiction. 600 seat theater tickets, 80 to 150 bucks, all proceeds going directly to Friendly House. Again, that is tomorrow night in L.A. Amazon has ordered a remake of the British comedy show Friday Night Dinner. This will air on the freebie service in the British version. Brothers Johnny and Adam Goodman return to their parents Jackie and Martin's house for the traditional Jewish Friday night Shabbat meal, a meal that is always beset with disruptions. Among the regular disruptions are Johnny and Adam trying to endlessly play pranks on each other. The show ran for six seasons and 37 episodes. One of the stars tragically passed away in 2021. Six weeks later, a special 90-minute documentary episode aired to celebrate the show's anniversary was dedicated to Ritter's memory. Amazon's remake will be named Dinner with the Parents, which sounds like it would be a Ben Stiller thing, right? It's given a straight to series order, 10 episodes, no casting details yet. Tech Radar says this is the not first, not second, not third. It's the fourth attempt to remake the show. The first one to get into actual production. The first attempt at a remake came in 2011, not long after the show first aired in the UK. Greg Daniels, the guy that remade The Office for Americans... He was signed up to remake the show. All right, you'd think that would work. They recruited Allison Janney from the West Wing and Mom and Tony Shalhoub. They were going to be in the roles, and somehow that didn't get picked up by NBC. CBS tried twice to remake the show, once in 2014 and again in 2016. This time, Amazon bypassed the pilot stage and went straight to production. Okay. Mac Packer Henry Winkler is up for an Emmy. How did he find out? Henry said, I was watching television. I was watching J.B. Smooth being very smooth. Apparently not during a casino commercial, Henry Winkler. And he's just a delight. Not during the casino commercials, Henry Winkler. And then I went immediately to Emmys.com and read down the list. And there was my name. Imagine that. That's how you find out. Hey, let me go to Emmys.com and see if anyone nominated me. All right. Henry Winkler said, I thought, hey, that's an okay picture. Then my children called and I got such lovely tweets and texts and emails. I'm very proud. So I'd be home and be working on a script. And I thought, I got this down. I'm ready. I'm just going to relax, have a V8, little ice, little lemon, and then I'll be fine. Then here I am in Los Angeles. I go to the set. 
Bill Hader takes me to Peru. I didn't even think of where he was going. The two of them, Alec Berg and Bill Hader, are extraordinary bosses. They're insightful. They're funny. They're great writers, wonderful directors. And there's a policy of no idiots. I clean that up for the paper on the set and the crew. Time out there. I had that rule at Sirius, and I have that rule in my life. I told the staff, if we sniffed that anybody was going to be a pain in the neck to work with, let's not do a deal with them. Here's why. It sucks all the energy out of your staff and just makes everybody miserable. So Henry Winkler, I support your no idiots policy. Henry said, when you're doing a scene and you're looking at the edge of the lens box, there's a piece of pink tape and you're acting your heart out to that piece of tape and the operator after the take leans out from behind the lens and the viewfinder and looks at you and just goes, wow. Then you think, well, that's like getting an Academy Award truly. I just like the idea of Henry Winkler at home having a V8 with a little ice, little lemon, and jumping on Emmys.com. And that's your comedy news for today. This weekend is normal episodes. I should say this weekend are normal episodes. Learn how to speak English, Johnny Mac. Follow the show for free on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you get your shows. Uh, if you like the episodes a little early and commercial free, for example, the aforementioned weekend shows that are already recorded, they'll come out early. You know you want it. Five bucks a month. First month free, become a premium subscriber. First month's free. Try it out. Maybe you'll hate it. I'm not offended if you hate it. It's fine. Or buy me a coffee.com slash daily comedy news. All righty. See you tomorrow.